So welcome to lecture 2.4. Today we are going to apply whatever we have learned about second order systems to a more general representation of second order systems. So uh, here in this case, the second order system is represented generally as k omega n square divided by s square plus twice theta omega n s plus omega n square. This is not a general second order system. A second order system can have uh, zeros as well. But we can say that this is a representation of second order systems without zeros. Uh, we are not writing this it this more simply as a divided by s square plus b s plus c because k omega n and zeta have particular significance which we are going to see once we see the response of the system. So here uh, the constant omega n zeta and k they are all real quantities. Omega n is called the undamped natural frequency. Zeta is the damping constant and K is the gain of the system. So now Zeta, as the name uh, says, determines the form of the response. So a value of Zeta equal to zero will uh, ensure that the response is undamped. There is no damping. And uh, we'll see why this happens. We can uh, start with this case only. And if we put Zeta is equal to zero in this equation that we have here, uh, we can write gs as k omega n square divided by s square plus omega n square uh, and uh, for a step input rs is equal to 1 by s the response is going to be in the s domain k omega n square s into s square plus omega n square and you can open this up to write this as k 1 by s minus s divided by s square plus omega n square right and this will give you s square plus omega n square here and minus here, right so uh, if you want to write c of t in this this will be simply k 1 minus cos omega n t you can see that the uh, response is the response of an undamped system. There is no damping. It's a continuous oscillatory response, the kind of response that we got for uh, the system uh, that we saw a specific system in the previous lectures. And you can also see that with S square plus omega n square here uh, in the denominator, the characteristic equation, the poles would be given by S square plus omega n square equal to zero. So that is S is equal to plus minus J omega n and you can write down the poles like this. So this is plus j omega n, this is minus j omega n. These poles are on the real axis, on the imaginary axis, sorry. They don't have any uh, real components. So this is the typical pole uh, zero location of uh, an undamped system. And the response is oscillatory. If you want to sketch it, the steady state, well, the the the, uh, the peak value is going to be k, and it is one minus cos omega n t. We have already seen that this response has a form like this, starts from zero, right, and the peak value is going to be k, right, and this omega n basically determines the time period of the response. So. So the time period omega n t is equal to, uh, when this is equal to 2 pi, so this time period would be 2 pi by omega n. So this is the time period of the response. So that is why omega n is called, omega n is called the undamped natural frequency because this is the, frequency at which the uh, at which the uh, system would oscillate if there was no damping so uh, i think uh, this should be very clear now the second important case would be uh, say for example let us take the simpler case first so we'll take a case uh, where we say zeta is equal to 1 so this 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 will see will give you the will give us the critically damped case that we have seen before. And we can see that if you write zeta is equal to one in the original transfer function, we get gs is equal to k omega n square divided by s square k 
plus twice omega n s because zeta is one plus omega n square, which gives us k omega n square divided by s plus omega n whole square. If you look at the pole locations for this, you see that the poles are given by s plus omega n whole square equal to zero. That means s is equal to minus omega n. But there are two poles at this location because this is a two degree polynomial. So the poles are here. And we have already seen that with uh, with negative uh, uh, real and equal poles, the response of the system is critically damped. So we can uh, find the time in, uh, uh, using the Laplace transformation, inverse Laplace transformation. We can again see whether we are getting the same result. So CS, which is the response to the step input, would be S, S plus omega n whole scale. So uh, we can open this up uh, using partial fraction expansion. We'll get k1 by s minus omega n divided by s plus omega n whole square minus 1 upon s plus omega n. This is something that you should be able to do yourself. And if you write down c of t now, you'll get k, write down the inverse Laplace here, you get minus one minus uh, this inverse Laplace of this is zeta omega and t and for this you should be we will we'll be writing down omega and t e to the power minus omega and t right because this is one by s square the inverse Laplace of one by s square is t and uh, it is uh, delayed by omega n, so uh, 1 plus s plus omega n, the inverse Laplace whole square would be e to the power minus theta omega n, uh, sorry, e, uh, omega n t into t, and then you multiply this with, pre-multiply this with theta, so you get your uh, response to be k1 minus e to the power minus omega n t into 1 plus omega n t, right? So this response is the response of a, a critically damped system. We have already seen the response of a critically damped system has these two terms. It has an exponential term, uh, exponentially decaying term, and then it has another term in which you have ex this exponentially decaying term multiplied with t. So if you will sketch it, you should be able to get uh, for a steady state value equal to k, you should be able to get a response like this. A critically damped response. So, something like this, right? Settling down at, at the value k. Oh. So now let us take, uh, so for a value of zeta equal to zero, your response is un undamped for a value of zeta is equal to one, it is critically damped. So between zero and one, you get an underdamped response. And we'll see how, we'll see how this is. So, uh, so our, our GS is going to be written as K omega N square, S square plus twice zeta omega N S plus omega N square. Now remember that uh, zeta is between 0 and 1. So if zeta is less than 1 and greater than 0, you can see that the determinant of this quadratic equation would be negative, right? Because the determinant is 4 zeta omega n square minus 4 omega n square b square minus 4 ac. Uh, so this is the determinant term. And you'll see since zeta is less than 1, so this term is going to be negative. That means the poles are complex. And uh, the uh, if you look at the real part of the poles, right, you see that this is going to be overall, the poles are going to be located at minus zeta omega n plus minus j times omega n under root of 1 minus zeta square. So the two poles, if you find out the poles of this quadratic equation, the two poles 
S1 and S2 are going to be equal to this. So the pole locations, if you want to sketch them, uh, are like this. So this term is omega n under root of 1 minus zeta square and this much this is equal to minus zeta omega n. Right. So uh, how do we uh, now find out? So, so, so we know that the response is going to be under damp because uh, complex poles with negative real, real parts, we get an un under damped response. So how do we do inverse Laplace transformation in general for this system, right? So what we can do is first write down the uh, response in the S domain. For the step input, it's going to be S divided by S square plus twice zeta omega n S plus omega n square. And then what we do is we write this down in in general as CS is equal to take the K part outside omega n square inside and write down this as S and now try to uh, we try to write this down as the as a whole square term. Uh, so we write this down as S uh, into S plus zeta omega n whole square. So when we do this, we'll get these two terms, plus we'll get one zeta omega n square term, uh, which we'll have to subtract. So minus zeta omega n, zeta square omega n square term. And then we have this omega n square term plus omega n square. Right. So this we'll write down as k omega n square s. We write this down as s plus zeta omega n square plus we write this one down as omega n square into 1 minus zeta square. This omega n under root of 1 minus zeta square we call the damped natural frequency omega d. So omega d is the damped natural frequency, right? And we'll write this down as k omega n square s into s plus zeta omega n square plus omega d square. So this is exactly similar to what we have done in the previous lectures. The only difference is that we are now doing it in terms of uh, quantities zeta, omega, and omega d. Otherwise, we are doing in terms of numbers. So this can be opened up using partial fraction expansion. Uh, I will uh, not do the derivation here. I think you should be able to do it. So we'll be writing Cs is equal to. So if you open this up, you should be able to get k 1 by s minus s plus zeta omega n divided by s plus zeta omega n square plus omega d square. This is the first term that you'll get and you'll also get zeta omega n divided by s plus zeta omega n square plus omega d square. So <clears throat> this uh, you can write down the inverse Laplace as k. So inverse Laplace of 1 by s is 1. Inverse Laplace of s plus zeta omega n divided by s plus zeta omega n whole square plus omega d square. If you remember this, this is the inverse Laplace of e to the power minus zeta omega n t cos omega d t. Right? And Similarly, uh, if we multiply and divide this term by omega d, we should be able to write this as minus zeta omega n by omega d. So I multiply and divide this by omega d so that I'm able to write this as sine 
e to the power minus theta omega nt sine omega dt. So, so be, because the constant in in the numerator here has to be has to be omega d in order to write this as e to the power zeta omega n sine omega dt. So that is why I multiply and divide by omega d. So omega d comes in the numerator here and I get this term and this omega d with which I'm dividing I put here and this is the numerator that I have here. So I can write ct in general as k1 minus e to the power minus zeta omega nt I can take out and inside I can write cos omega dt right plus uh, this omega d is omega d is uh, omega n into 1 minus zeta square so I can write this as my plus zeta divided by under root of 1 minus zeta square sine omega dt right so this can be further uh, simplified uh, and you, you can get a single term here uh, you can write this whole thing in terms of only a cos uh, function because this is uh, uh, a trigonometric function which can be written as a single single uh, function either of cos or sine uh, but uh, that is elementary so this is the under damped response you can see oscillations here right the uh, oscillation frequency is omega d that is why omega d is called the damped natural frequency right and if you s sketch it you should be able to get something very similar to what we have obtained before right so and this is the value at which it settles down these transients will die out and the final value for at which it settles down would be equal to k uh, we have already seen this in detail for uh, for our uh, systems in which we had numeric values. Even in this, if you put uh, zeta is equal to zero, you should be able to get <coughs> your original response for the undamped system. So when you put zeta is equal to zero, this thing will become one, this thing will vanish inside, and omega d would be equal to omega n. So you'll get k into one minus cos omega n t. So that is the undamped natural response. Okay. Now coming to the, uh, please remember that the pole locations here, the uh, the pole locations here are like this, with the real part being equal to minus zeta omega n, and this real part actually determines the and the uh, the exponential decay, and the and the uh, the uh, imaginary component, if you remember, was omega n under root of. under root of 1 minus zeta square which we defined as omega d so so the imaginary part determines the frequency of oscillation so this is equal to this is equal to omega j plus j omega d plus j omega d minus j omega d and this is equal to minus zeta omega n and you can you see very clearly that the real part of the pole determines the exponential decay and the imaginary component of the pole determines the frequency of oscillation which is the damped natural frequency the third part of uh, the last part of this is when you have zeta greater than one which should now give you the over damped system right and uh, that is why zeta is actually uh, because the value is big uh, greater than one so uh, it seems logical that your damping would increase so for zeta greater than one uh, your gs uh, which we have written as k omega n square uh, s square plus twice zeta omega n s plus omega n square now the determinant as we have seen uh, 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 is equal to uh, we saw that the determinant was equal to uh, uh, zeta omega n square minus zeta omega n square. So since zeta is greater than 1, so the determinant is positive. That means the poles are real. 
and they are unequal. So the poles are like this and they have negative real parts uh, and they are unequal. They don't have any imaginary part. So that means that, this, that the response that we should get uh, would be an overdamped response. And what we have to do is actually to factorize this uh, as S plus A into S plus B, right? Uh, and then open the partial fraction expansion once if you want to find out the response. So we write down our CS. This is going to be K omega N square S into S square plus twice zeta omega N S plus omega N square, right? And then <clears throat> what we do is we write down the two poles. So, so one of the poles is going to be, so S1 and S2 are going to be minus zeta omega N plus omega N plus minus omega n under root of zeta square minus one, right? So this you obtain by factorizing this uh, this quadratic equation. And basically what you can do is you can write down your CS as, so if I call these poles alpha and beta, I should be able to write down my K omega n square as S into S plus alpha S into plus beta. So the two poles are real and both of them uh, can be written down. So we, we, we can basically write down the partial fraction expansion of this very easily as A by S plus B by S plus alpha plus C by S plus beta, where alpha and beta are given by these uh, numbers. Uh, I'll just write this down straight away because it's just a matter of and applying the right mathematics. So I get one by K, I'll take outside and get one by S plus one upon one upon twice under root of zeta square minus one into zeta plus under root of zeta square minus one. This is the constant B, right, into 1 divided by S plus zeta omega N plus omega N under root of zeta square minus 1. So this is the first uh, pole at S plus alpha. And then the second constant C, if you want to find that out, you will get similar uh, a similar expression zeta square minus one, but you have here minus zeta plus under root of zeta square minus one. And then you have the the pole at beta, which is S plus zeta omega N minus omega N under root of zeta square minus one. So this is basically partial fraction expansion of these terms. And if you write down the inverse Laplace transform from this, which should now be very easy to write. You will get one plus exponential minus zeta plus under root of zeta square plus minus one omega n t, right? So this is, uh, this is the, this is the pole. So you get two minus terms, right? Divided by this this whole thing here in the denominator, right? <clears throat> so with this is divided by twice zeta square minus one zeta plus the root of zeta square minus one, and then the uh, the second term corresponding to second exponential term corresponding to this plus exponential minus zeta omega n plus minus this and plus omega n under root of zeta square minus one. Yeah. Divided by this term that you have here divided by twice 
zeta scat minus c. So, uh, this is to be multiplied with t, right? Yeah, divided by by zeta scat minus one, this term that you have here, into minus zeta plus under root of zeta scat minus one. Right. So this expression is slightly messy, but uh, it is not very difficult to see that this is the sum of two exponential terms, uh, which are decaying, right, uh, with time in addition to the constant term. And if you sketch it, you should be able to, so you should be able to, you would be getting something like this, right, right. And depending upon the value of zeta. As your value of zeta increases, the response becomes slower and slower. Right? Right. But in any case, the response has to reach the value k. So I hope this is clear uh, uh, from the previous lecture and from this lecture it is clear as to how uh, a general second order system response can be found out uh, from the uh, general equation of the second order system. Now, the only thing that we have to add in this is now to basically specify the various parameters from the responses. Like we specified the time constant uh, and the arise time and settling time from the first order of the first order response, we can in a similar way specify these quantities for the uh, response of second order system. Right, and this we are going to do in the next lecture. Thanks a lot for listening.